A few other tools that I have found handy in my shop and you may find in your workroom. Um, one of them is this little odds and ends basket. It's like a vegetable basket, three layered thing. You can put a lot of little gadgets, gizmos, thread spools, whatever in it and hang it up out of the way and keep your tabletops clear. A lot of times you can't get much done because things keep falling off your tables and so you want to keep your tabletops clear. The next item I've got is this rubber matting that comes on a roll in your housewares department of your big department stores. You can get it just about anywhere. But it is nice because it's actual rubber matting. It comes in white, and beige, and black, different colors, so you can color coordinate if you want to. But you can cut it with an old pair of scissors. Don't use your rotary cutter or your good rotary cutter. You can make a piece big enough. You can see the little feet on this one. I kept my serger on this one for a long time. It will keep your machines from sliding when you're using them. You can cut smaller pieces like this, and your foot pedal will not slide across the floor. Um, if that is not enough for you, they make Velcro. Give me some Velcro and duct tape and I'm happy. This is Velcro and this is the double sticky kind, the, the kind with the adhesive on the back. I chased and chased and chased my foot pedal on my sewing machine and I, there has to be a better way. I had gotten pieces of wood and hooked the stuff to it. Finally, I thought, you know, the prickly side, they call it the hook side of the Velcro. I took two strips. Now, don't cover up any screws or anything like that that you may need to get to. But I took two strips of the hook part. And when I plop this down on my carpet, it won't go anywhere. You have to suction cup it off when you get ready to move it. So this is great if you've had trouble keeping up with your foot pedal. A lot of times you need clamps for things. You can clamp your quilts to tables. You can do a lot of things. They make different types of clamps. This is a big woodworker clamp. A lot of people have trouble with it. I can do it, but a lot of people, it's too tight. But this is a nice clamp. These are the two-inch ones that you get from Staples in the office department, office supplies department. These are nice. They can clamp on a, uh, one of those brown tables or a piece of plywood table. And they're very nice. I had a class with some ladies that just could not deal with these clamps, and I got to thinking about the, cl the um, clamps that were on my refrigerator, the magnets. They worked great for these ladies, so if you can't use the really, really tight clamps, try these. Another option is if you need to clamp things, try looking in the dollar store for potato chip bag clamps. I'll take these and run a little hot glue in here and put some of that rubber stuff on it and they'll hold anything. So, you know, look around in your stores, and they're not going to be in the quilt shop, but if it works for you, get it and try it. Um, I have some other things that I wanted to tell you about. When you're cleaning your machine, and I hope you do, please use your manual and clean and oil it, they make something called, um, I call it canned air, and I sent somebody to town to get me some, and they said, oh, you mean compressed air. Okay, whatever, it's under pressure. It has this little straw that comes with it, and you can... Mash the thing and it will um, blow air, not water. You don't want to blow into your sewing machines to get things out, but this canned air works really good. Keep it upright when you mash the trigger, um, otherwise some of the chemicals may come out and it may be a liquid form. The other thing, it's nice to clean off tables real quick if you've got little batting pieces or uh, dust, lint, whatever, and it's nice for that also. And I saw somebody on the show the other day, and they were airbrushing paint with it. I don't know exactly how you do that, but that was interesting. Mr. E, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, if you get things on your iron, build up of starch or whatever, you can take this little pad, and you get this in the dollar store, take this pad and saturate it with water, and turn your iron on or cold, either way works. And rub your iron over it, and it will clean it off beautifully. You can use this over and over. These are really nice to have on hand when you're using adhesive things and starch. Um, painter's tape is blue tape that's not as sticky as masking tape or duct tape. It is nice if you want to have a straight line across something. You can just run a piece of painter's tape right quick and then um, make you a line by it or quilt by it, whatever. 
If you need to attach something to the table, if you're pin basting a quilt and one side is shorter than the edge of the table where you can tape it to the table, this wide stuff, I sent my husband and I said, get me a narrow one and a wide one. I didn't know it came this far. I love this size right here. It will hold anything. Um, you can use these strips more than once, so don't just use them and throw them away. If you're tracing things, you can take your paper to the table and then your material over and hold everything in place. But it does not leave that sticky, gummy stuff on your fabric. You don't have to worry about getting rid of that. So this is really nice. And the last thing in this, the last two things in this segment. I'm going to talk about spray starch. Heavy starch. Many times, maybe your backing of your quilt needs ironing. And if you don't want to iron it, you can just put a little spray starch on it and moisten it, and it will take the wrinkles out. If you're working on a piece that needs a little bit more rigidity, a little more stiffness, you can spray several layers, spray it, iron it, spray it, iron it, and it's more like parchment paper, so if you're doing applique or um, anything like that, this spray starch is really nice. This is heavy spray starch. It comes in the grocery store. Just look for the heavy. You can also get the concentrate and mix it up in a spray bottle yourself. It, it's just whatever your preference is. When I get a quilt done, um, I like to take this brush and just really go over it on the top and on the bottom. If there are any loose threads or I've not clipped threads somewhere, this will jerk it over and make me see it. It's more obvious. It also gets the dust and threads off of it. Between this and the wide tape, I'll either take one of those things you roll across it, or I'll take a big piece of this and wrap it around my hand with the sticky side out, and you can pat your clothes down, you can pat um, uh, your quilt down, whatever you do, need to do to get the lint off of it, and it's really nice. So that puts a nice touch on the end of your quilt.